Well, it's a hopelessly overcast and miserable day. Uh, and I'm out in the countryside of South Africa at a place called Sagkels Drift. Uh, it's not a place really, it's a road along the course of the Pinars River. And it's famous for its birding. Not so much its photography, because it's hard to take pictures here. But the birds here, especially in summer, are absolutely amazing. So the deal is, I'm going to be driving down this road towards the floodplain of the Pinars River at Como Gomo. I'm going to be looking for birds on the side of the road, listening for birds on the side of the road, hopefully photographing some birds on the side of the road before checking out the state and the condition of the floodplain at the village of Como Como because if it's inundated there can be great waders there and uh, I might even get my own waders on and enter the water which is quite a frightening experience because it's deep you don't know what's there there's disease in it because of cattle um, and waste in the water and there may well be a few snakes to go with that. These acacia thorn thickets that I'm driving through at the moment are fantastic for things like wax bills and other small birds. But with this weather, they're all hiding and hunkering down, They're just trying to keep themselves to themselves. I think if the sun came out, suddenly the song would break forth and they'd all come out of their hiding places. I just felt compelled to stop here next to this marshy area and listen I can hear some fantastic frogs or toads or something I don't know what they are but they sound great and I think if you came down this road after dark with a torch you could really take some stunning pictures of them These marshy areas are what the Pianars River is all about. And just looking out over there, I can see quelia, flocks of quelia flying, white winged buddha birds, butterflies, and the yellow bishops that frequent these wetter areas as well. Today I'm going to be using the 7D Mark II, which is a crop sensor camera, quite an old one from Canon, on a 100 to 400 millimeter lens. Because it's quite dark at the moment, I can't put the 1.4 extender on, which uh, I'd like to use for birding here. I didn't bring my big lens out today because it's hard to handle uh, when you're walking around, but also uh, I wasn't feeling that comfortable with my safety out here. So, using this camera setup, it's going to be light challenged. And I've got the ISO set to 2500. I've got it in manual mode, which I kind of like for this kind of conditions, because the only thing that's going to blow out here is the sky. So, what we have to do is set that manual exposure so that the sky on the meter is two stops overexposed, which is about all the dynamic range that this particular camera can handle and what that will do is keep the highlights from blowing in the sky in any photograph I take anywhere of anything on the ground or anything with a bit of sky in it. So the birds should be well exposed in the bushes, the bushes should be well exposed, everything else should be well exposed and the sky 
will not be blown. It's probably not fair to, for, for me to portray every outing in Africa as a wildlife or nature photography click fest. It's not. Sometimes it's a hard slog just coming out day after day in bad weather when it's unlikely to be good photography but just coming out anyway especially at this time of year in summer when all the migrants are here and to try and scout, explore, learn, understand so that when those brief windows of opportunity do appear in those moments of great light or great sightings you've got that background and knowledge to draw upon if you've been here before you know where things are at you can come out and get the shot This area is known as Creek Road and it's a good road because it takes us off the main Zarkil's Drift Road and in across the floodplain and the bush is much thicker and closer around the track. And the beauty of that is you can get much closer to the birds on either side if you walk or drive down here. The problem though, being on the floodplain, is that this road is frequently flooded, especially in the summer months and in wet weather. So you need to come down here a little cautiously to make sure you can get your car through the flooded areas. to self, close the flaps on the front of the car before driving through big puddles. All the water came in through here on these special little Land Rover vent ports and uh, soaked my phone, my wallet and my spare batteries. Let's hope we survive, hey? What fun on the Zarkel's Drift Road. I think there's probably some nice opportunities for photography along this road but it's really awkward these conditions, it's so wet uh, there's so much water around, you've got to be careful where you stop it's quite deep mud, you get nasty stuff all over your clothes but the options are probably bird photography albeit they're a little distant and skittish wonderful opportunities for macro photography I think and also at certain times of year when the rains come uh, flower photography there's some gorgeous lilies just starting to come up and some other flowers that i don't know the name of so yeah a bit light on photography but quite fun in terms of playing in the mud down craig road we see a lot of weavers in South Africa. There's a lot of different species, but they're a colorful bird. And uh, it's a shame not to stop for them and, and take a picture, to be quite honest. And they're quite gregarious and energetic, and they like to build their nests over water. And when they're in nesting season, they'll go back and forth with pieces of grass. So they're well worth staking out and actually photographing because that repeated behavior flying back into the nest, displaying, that kind of thing, can make for some really nice shots. So I've just been sat with these guys as the sun has started to break out. And I'm just enjoying the ambience, sitting in uh, a big puddle on the Zargil's Drift Road, watching weavers build their nests. So this here is game fencing. It's much higher than normal cattle fencing. And you can tell by the height that there's some sort of antelope in there behind this fence because they like to jump over fences and they can jump very high. And I just spotted them behind some acacia trees. They're the sable antelope, 
one of the most beautiful in Africa. And I haven't seen them in the wild for quite some time, but these are obviously farmed or game ranched. Uh, but they're still very beautiful. And it's great to see them on a day like today, when I haven't seen <laughs> a hell of a lot else. There's a very special time in Africa after rainfall. It's a short window when all sorts of things happen. As the roads dry out and the bush dries out, butterflies come and land and look for moisture. And at the same time, the landscape seems to come alive. The insects start buzzing, the frogs stop, the birds start chirping. It's a whole changeover that happens. And it's a wonderful thing to try and capture that because here we only get rainfall in the summer months and sometimes we have drought for years upon years. So this is the famous floodplain at the village of Gomo Gomo, just north of a town called Hammondskral and about a hundred kilometers north of where I live in Johannesburg. And every summer in around November, December, January, February, if the rains come, there's an inundation and these meadows fill with water and the cattle walk across them and the birds come down, the migrant birds come down to feed on the abundance in these waters and it's a great time of year if you're a birder to come here and check out what species you can find if you're a photographer it's also good to come down here but it's difficult it's difficult photography it's not easy to get out into these marshes i do have some waders with me but i've never really felt comfortable about that so if if i did feel comfortable about that i'd probably wander off in there and catch bilharzia or some other horrible disease in the quest to photograph some birds. I'm at the eastern end of Zakil's Drift and it's late afternoon. There's fluffy white clouds overhead and the landscape is green in every direction. And although I describe today as a photographic bust, I don't feel it's been a bust from any other perspective because wildlife photography is more than just photographs. It's also about being here. It's about experiencing things. It's about seeing things. It's about being a witness and part of the environment. And I think from that perspective, this day has been spectacular. I'll see you next time.